Oh, hi there. Hey, Cypher here. The 2003 film The Last Samurai is a fun romp through Meiji Restoration era of Japan. But let's not quibble, this movie has no basis in reality and misses a golden opportunity to tell a really good true story. There's not much in spoilers, but you've been warned anyways. The film is supposed to take place in the late 1870s, and in so being gets a lot of things wrong about the era. Japan was in fact westernizing during the Meiji Restoration, but not so much by following American trends. Instead, they had a lot of basis on the newly created Germany. Japan really tried to emulate German modernizations. Though arms sales were made to Japan after the US Civil War, by the late 70s, Japan had moved on to more advanced weaponry, furnished mostly by France and England. With all that combined, what would a US cavalryman be doing as an advisor at that time? Nothing at all. Furthermore, the US had no reason to make a trade treaty with Japan at the time. The treaty they signed in 1858 was still in effect. The whole reason the main character is there is ridiculous to begin with. The image of a middling samurai in this movie is really strange. We are supposed to think that all samurai were these monkish warriors hidden away in seclusion, but after years of Tokugawa peace, they had become underemployed urbanite bureaucrats. The people bowing and treating these samurai with reverence in the 1870s is silly. This kind of attitude is reminiscent of what Edward Said criticized as Orientalism, which basically treats Far Eastern Asians in general as over overly traditional and timeless. And obviously this is an incorrect attitude to have. Any historian of Japan will complain about this orientalism that most Americans have. And this movie just plays into that delusion. That being said, overly traditional is not a good description of how the American protagonist is greeted by the emperor in this movie. And is quite contradictory to how anybody was expected to gain access to his personage. There are instances of Europeans becoming samurai, but not a single American. This depiction of a dances with wolves in Japan is kind of insulting when there were Europeans who could have fit this bill. But, well, America and all that. So let's just get off the subject of the main character because he is not really the person we should care about anyways. Katsumoto is clearly supposed to represent a very specific person in history. He talks about having been an advisor to the Emperor Meiji, the Meiji reforms are pushing him towards rebellion, and he resides in southern Japan. He's a representation of Saigo Takamori, who was the eventual leader of the Satsuma Rebellion of 1877. That being said, the depiction in this movie does Saigo no service, and he was a genuine badass. So I'm just going to list a few comparisons. As opposed to Saigo, Katsumoto is physically fit and of high nobility. In reality, Saigo was enfeebled by a bad leg that he had gotten by spending a few years in a small cage. And he was always slightly pudgy after that. Katsumoto in this movie is shown to be a Zen Buddhist, and this fits Saigo, but doesn't tell the awesome story behind his spiritualism, instead making it some kind of anachronistic samurai tradition, which is just silly. Katsumoto seems to speak fluent English, but does not discuss why. Saigo had been part of the delegation sent by the Emperor in 1871 to the US and Europe to figure out a path for modernization. Saigo probably didn't speak any English, but he did speak to numerous English-speaking people during his travels. Katsumoto is supposed to be a high-ranking samurai, but Saigo had only been raised to a station by his involvement in the Meiji Restoration of 1868. Before that, he had been in exile and in a fairly pitiful state. Finally, the way Katsumoto is instinctively against all samurai reform is very contradictory. Saigo had actually been an integral part of the removal of many traditional class designations, even being part of the discussion to remove the daimyo class. His turn to rebellion was based mostly on the emperor's order to no longer wear swords in public. 
Lastly, the way the Satsuma Rebellion is depicted is erroneous. It happens in two short battles with samurai in their ancient armor charging Japanese soldiers equipped with American Civil War equipment. That's all wrong. Many Japanese scholars call it the Southern War. It took months of intense battle and castle sieges. All the while, both sides used guns, and mostly more modern weaponry than the muzzle loaders that are depicted. The final battle did end in swordplay, but only because they ran out of ammunition, not for Bushido's sake. Saigo did commit seppuku, but that was more an expression of defiance than one of subservience. They even hid his head after the battle, which is distinctly against Bushido. Honestly, I would have much rather seen a movie about Saigo Takamori without all the America stuff. He actually has a pretty good story himself, and if you're interested in Saigo, I highly recommend reading this book. By the way, I always try to include references and sources in the description below, so if you're interested in this book, it'll be described below. The movie is fun, but I could never recommend it without giving some serious caveats. Honestly, the book is better than the movie, and I would recommend reading the book more than watching the movie. And after all, if you've seen any going native story like Dances with Wolves or Lawrence of Arabia, then you've seen this just set in Japan. So be sure to tell me what other based on true story movies need busting. And also don't forget to subscribe and watch some other episodes while you're at it. I'll see you next time. God damn it, I had the book right freaking there. Where the hell did I put it? I used it to write the episode. And now I can't find it. Freaking A. Where the hell else could I have put the damn book? America and all that.